Okay guys, we're gonna try again. It's like the third time I've tried to get set up to take this shot. Uh, get my stationary camera up there. My uh, Lodge number 10 Dutch oven. And let's not go too far with that lid. I'm gonna need it. And as you can tell here, I've already got Actually, that burner is still pretty wide. I've been having to fool around with the camera here. Hot burner. Melted bacon grease. By the way, if anybody tells you that bacon grease can be stored on the, on the um, stovetop there, I just don't do it. I, I, keep, I keep the grease that I use in the refrigerator this is actually turned rancid I'm gonna to have to melt that out of there clean my jar up and, and uh, do something completely different there but anyway what we got here I went to the local Iowa F store and those of you who are from Iowa will understand what I'm saying and that's a pound of regular sausage a pound of Italian sausage And then two pounds of their ground beef. I like the F store. Um, being with it's locally, it truly is locally owned. And my dad was a meat cutter. One of the things that he had learned as a kid growing up. And so, as a kid myself growing up, I grew up around butchering and that kind of stuff. The F store has a, has a good meat counter. And uh, usually has, most of the stores I've been in have, have great people working the meat counter. That does make a difference. Uh, you get people that know what they're doing. And you notice I put that bacon, I put just, oh I don't know, about a tablespoon of you know, bacon grease in there. And uh, in doing that, then that keeps that keeps the uh, sausage from sticking to the to the deal. I put some hamburger in here, mix this up. In case you haven't figured out what I'm doing here, when I cook, I tend to cook the way the way I did when I was a kid. I grew up in a in a rather large family, and. Uh, my mom died when I was in high school, and uh, my junior, between my junior and senior year of high school, mom passed away, and she had already taught me how to cook, and uh, there's a story that goes around of how that when one of my older brothers was in college, he would take a cake back to uh, the dormitory with them every after every weekend and that cake then would be eaten by his classmates and at some point along in there somebody mentioned that boy his mom made good cakes and he laughed it wasn't his mom making those cakes at all it was his little brother and uh, I'm not sure why exactly mom taught me how to cook but mom taught me how to cook and uh, I'm still learning. She was too. I think every every boy appreciates his mother's cooking. I know my son appreciates his mother's cooking. And uh, that's just the way life is. Moms and moms and sons tend to bond together in, in neat, neat ways. And uh, with mom dying as young as what she did, I sure am glad she invested time into me that she did. Well, like I said, we've got a pound of Italian sausage, a pound of regular cut sausage, and two pounds of burger here. And as you can tell, it begins to fry up really good. That's one of the reasons why I wanted the Dutch oven. This is too much meat for even a number 10 frying pan. If you're going to do, if you're going to put, this is a little bit over four pounds of meat because I when I go in, I always tell them, I say, weights don't have to be exact, just throw about a pound, you know. And so I usually end up with a little bit over a pound each time, and, you know. 
So, long story short, there's over four pounds of meat here. Now, I'm going to let that continue to brown, and as that's browning, I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Again, that's a dual element stove. In that dual element stove, it, uh, it works good. So, along with that, now if I can find where I put it, an onion here. Oh, look here. Here's an onion. Anyway, I started to say, it started to tell the story of how I learned to cook in big batches. And in, in cooking in big batches, it's just what I've always done. And so, I can't eat everything that I cook. At least not all at once. And so, one of the things I've learned to do is I've learned to put stuff in storage containers and put it in the freezer. And that allows me then to... Um, freeze up stuff ahead of time, you know, to where I can take it to work ahead of time, that kind of stuff. Uh, if I do very many of these, you're going to think I overeat. And I really don't. As a matter of fact, uh, over the last two years, I've lost almost 50 pounds. I weighed this morning. I'm, my weight this morning is the lowest it's been that, since I've been recording. When I started recording a couple years ago, I was at 258. 258.4 and before I started recording I actually had one uh, morning weigh in where I weighed 262. Well my blood pressure was through the roof and my blood sugars were going out of whack because my doctor was not at all happy with with my lifestyle and uh, thank good for thank God for a good doctor. Uh, I like my doctor. He's, a, he's about the same age as my youngest son my only son, my youngest kid. But anyway, in all that, uh, I went from over 260 down to where when I weighed this morning, it was a two, it was a 211.2. .2. I have lost right at 50 pounds in two years. Now, part of that is because I've, I've went to somewhat a keto lifestyle. Now, I'm obviously not going completely keto. Um, there's a reason for that. Number one is, I don't like that many eggs. <laughs> if, you, if you do keto, you gotta learn to like eggs. Eggs are good for you. Uh, eggs, unfortunately, over the years, uh, for a while, was uh, a big bugaboo about uh, cholesterol and that kind of stuff. They're now finding that eggs had very little to do with the cholesterol kicks that people were having. They've got people on egg diets who are lowering their cholesterol as they go. Um, I'm not sure why anybody would necessarily want to eat only eggs, but uh, there are people who do that. And there's a lot of protein in eggs. That's one of the reasons that people do that. And uh, Anyway, what we're doing here is we're just kind of dicing up an onion. We're going to throw this onion in there. And uh, at some point here, we're going to start putting in some spices and that kind of stuff. Now, I'm doing this basically as a live shot. Now, I'm filming it and recording it. And we'll post it, post it later. But I, I'm learning that if I post stuff... No, if I shoot stuff on my iPhone, it goes up, uh, if I do it directly from the iPhone via the, the uh, cell phone service, it goes up pretty quickly. If I shoot it with this camera, this camera is that uh, little 720p uh, Canon point and shoot. And that takes good video, and I think, I, I think we're finding that if I can get it onto a tripod, keep it stable, and not bounce you around, it actually takes really nice video. So this may become my, my indoor camera. Okay, so we got the onion in there. And we're going to give that another good quick stir here. Oh, um, what did I do with my hot pad? There it is. And uh, you can tell that's beginning to... 
that's beginning to brown out. I love cooked onions. Yeah, I'm just one of those people who cooked onions just I love it. I'm sure everybody around me loves it when I eat it. Uh, but hey, that's one of the reasons I drive a forklift. Nobody has to be around me all that close. <laughs> anyway, be all that as it may be. Where was I here? I was telling stories about onions. Getting the onion in there, getting things chopped up. I'm not quite ready to put a pan, uh, the lid back on that yet. We will. Uh, let's get a pepper and put it in there. I got a red pepper here. Um, Ezzy, you went out? Okay, you can go out. Ezzy, Ezzy, go ahead. Go ahead. Go on out. Oh, you're not going to go out. Okay. I don't know if she's going to get in the shot there or not. But, oh, I think I've already said I like my Ezzy kitty. She's a good little kitty. This particular pepper is one I bought about a week ago and probably should have used it a week ago. And actually, it got in behind some stuff when I, when I cooked up a. Um, I put pepper in my uh, pot roast when I do a pot roast. And I cooked up a pot roast the other day. And uh, went looking for peppers and didn't find them. And so I bought a new pepper to put in the pot roast. And then when I put groceries away, I happened to find this one. But went ahead and put the, the green, the new green one in the pot roast. Um, this will work real well in the chili. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't worry too much about the seeds. I kind of like uh, bell pepper seeds. They, they actually have a good zing. If you put like a jalapeno seed or something like that in, the capsicum in, in uh, jalapeno, uh, I can take the heat. I don't mind the heat at all, but there are points of the, of the development of a jalapeno where the um, pepper will actually set off my bitter response. And for me, it's like chomping down on a piece of uh, pecan shell. If you've never done that, you know how that sets off your bitter response and it really messes you up for a while. Um, it's, it's not fun. And so while I love the taste of jalapeno, I'm finding that that aspect of it makes it to where the, me and jalapenos are no longer the buddies we once were, which is a shame because like I said, I, I actually like the taste of jalapeno. Okay, well we've got that quartered up. Let's see if we can get rid of this aspect. I, I don't know how much of this is you're actually seeing because I think I pointed that pretty much at the, the stew pot, but you may be seeing some of it. Anyway, we dice the, the pepper up. And obviously, you wash stuff and everything like that. Um, in this day and age of field chemicals and pesticides, that kind of stuff. You, you, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, they, they do enough air spraying around here, even, even the stuff I pull out of my own garden, to make sure I get it washed really, really well. Uh, now, I'm not quote unquote an organic farmer. And on the other hand, I don't use a lot of chemical on my garden at all. As a matter of fact, the last couple of years I haven't even done a garden. But that's going to change here, I think, in a little bit. As a matter of fact, I should start looking for some asparagus out there. I put some asparagus uh, plants in a while back. And they should actually be producing. This is their third year, fourth year. It's at least their third, it may be their fourth year. Um, so I should be able to, just, if I see asparagus, I should be able to take just about anything I want. I put in seven roots, and I've lost one of them, so I've only got six hills. Um, for those of you who are, may have been my classmates as a kid growing up, you kind of got to laugh about hills of asparagus. but. Uh, even the roots of asparagus because we used to pick it by the field. Um, but anyway, I got asparagus out there and uh, that should be coming in here um, within a week. 
uh, yeah, I'm hoping then that that usually s signals the end that frost is done. I got some plants in here I need to get outside and let them get some fresh air and some fresh water and that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's that's a bell pepper in there. You you can see it in the pot. I know you can. Uh, we're gonna stir that up again here one more time. And I'm gonna break the meat up. You can see that the meat's beginning to break up pretty good. So as we go here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this meat and everything fried up in the Dutch oven. The last batch of chili I made, I made in this Dutch oven. And that's the reason why I'm having to resize in that pan, it, or that lid to this pan. That, that did not take kindly to that. I have to apologize to all you lodge lovers out there. I think I may have, I didn't ruin it, but I sure didn't help it any at all. Um, okay, so there we've got the meat, the uh, pepper, and the um, onion in there. Now we're gonna go for some celery. I'm gonna be over here washing celery here real quick. I'll put some celery in there. I'm not gonna throw that container away because I won't use anywhere close to being anywhere near all this celery. Wash it all up here. Yeah. Anyway, what I started to tell you was, with this camera, I like the camera, and I like the, everything like that, but then I have to upload it through my uh, DSL modem, uh, that DSL, what do they call that connection, the telephone line modem, and uh, it takes forever. Their, their upload speeds are not fast at all. Man, to be honest with you, it takes me three or four hours just to upload like a seven minute video. And that's what I got going on right now. I've got uh, a video from earlier today in the process of uploading that uh, it's, you, you'll see it later this afternoon. Uh, but <laughs> that's kind of funny. As I'm filming this, it's, it's about quarter after one in the afternoon. Uh, this video won't go up, but won't probably be visible until after midnight. So by the time, by the time you see this, the previous little video will have already been up for quite a while. But anyway, that's what's happening in my life. It's just nasty, cold, wet enough outside that I decided to go ahead and do some cooking here. This will get me pretty well cooked up for the week. Now, you say chili, celery, and chili? Yeah. Celery and chili is actually pretty good. Now that at this point, we got the, the the meat is actually pretty well cooked through here. There's a few a few spots, and especially with it being sausage, you want to make sure it gets cooked. But that's beginning to that's beginning to take place. Now what we're going to do here. If we're going to let this kind of simmer here for a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and let that kind of steam. There's quite a bit of water from the veggies and even from the uh, meat. And there's quite a bit of water in the bottom of that pan. Um, I'm going to turn it back up just a skosh, not a lot. Turn it back up just a skosh. And I'm going to start putting spices in that. Uh, I'm going to leave chili powder to last is what I'm going to do here. Let's see here. I want a little bit of cayenne pepper. You don't want a lot of cayenne pepper unless you want it really, really hot. But you do want a touch. Just a touch. That's not quite touch enough. There we go. I, I would guess I'm actually putting less than half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in there. Uh, putting a lot of cayenne pepper in there. One of the reasons I'm not putting a lot of pepper in there is because I also like white pepper. I love the, the taste of white pepper. White pepper has a completely different pepper taste. I love the taste of pepper and I can take the heat. And it's like I said, I, as long as I don't get into the uh, 
the, the bitter response that that uh, jalapenos do to me. I'm in pretty good shape with pepper. Uh, my dad used to laugh about pepper. He had a uh, brother-in-law that was a Greek, and, uh, and the, the Greek liked to play burnout. And uh, every once in a while, Dad would visit my aunt. And the uncle would uh, be sitting there eating his peppers. And the story went, as a matter of fact, my brother and I saw this. Um, <laughs> he was sitting there, the uncle was sitting there eating his peppers one day when Dad walked in with kind of a gleeful glint in his eye, the uncle offered Dad peppers. And Dad sat there and he got a pepper in and made it work. Oh, let's put a little bit of turmeric in there. I'm not going to put a lot of turmeric in there, but we are going to put some. And a lot of people don't put turmeric in their chili, but I, I, I don't mind turmeric in my chili. I don't mind turmeric. Anyway, you don't want a lot of it because it's, stained. it's got a real heavy stain to it. Uh, the cumin is what actually gives chili its taste. Cumin is, and that's what we got here. And uh, a little bit of cumin. Matter of fact, we'll put probably almost. A tablespoon. Well, I can smell that. More cumin. Okay. I may come back and add some more of that. Let's see. Cumin chili powder. Let's empty this container. We got this one just about done. Now, what you're going to see here. Chili powder, a, a lot of chili powder is, a, a lot of the ingredient in chili powder is nothing more than paprika. It's a red stain. Paprika itself doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it sure does stain. While the turmeric gives you a yellow stain, the uh, chili powder gives you a red stain, dark red stain. And so, in that regard, chili powder is kind of cool in that way. So, oh, hey, let's not do that. Let's figure out how to open this particular container of chili powder. Evidently, I'd had that open before. I just forgot how it worked. Yeah. Oh, I know what I forgot. I don't I haven't got any oregano in there yet. I know I got to put oregano in there. We'll get that here in a minute. We're going to call that enough chili powder for the moment. And that's not enough chili powder for the batch. Now, a lot of recipes will tell you not to do it this way. But that's because people actually burn. A lot of people who try to do it this way will not leave enough moisture in their, in their deal. And they actually burn the chili powder. Burnt chili powder has got to bitter bitter taste to it. it it's not good and that's why so if you do this at this stage while it's steaming your chili powder will actually soak into the meat it'll actually get your spices all that begin to soak into the meat and to me it gives a much more balanced chili in the long run and let's see we're going to put some we're going to put some uh, oregano in there. I'm not sure whose idea of oregano Italian spices in chili was, but there's a lot of chili recipes out there that tell you that you want oregano in there. And I've got oregano right there. And i got oregano right there. This one here is the one I've been trying to use. Here we go, oregano. Like I said, we're not going to put a lot in there. We're going to put enough in there. Season it. Okay. And then, 
we're going to go for my favorite. If I can find it, here we go. Garlic. I like garlic. I like onions. People don't like don't like me when I get done with my garlic, but I do like garlic. So got garlic in there, and even though I've got onions in there, I'm gonna put a little bit of onion powder in there. If you notice here, I'm not putting a lot of salt in here. Um, that has to do with my blood pressure situation, and. Uh, when it gets all done, I've been off salt long enough that there's enough there's enough salt sodium in the in the spices in this that I that I personally get enough salt. Now, if you were to do this, you probably would want to do something different than what I'm doing in that regard. Okay, so at this point, now I'm actually going to turn the fire up on this just a little bit the heat um, see that's why I, I like that that works for a nice trivet and uh, now that I've got it seasoned up it's not before it was actually kind of rusting a little bit okay let me see if I got everything in here now I think I do let's turn the let's turn that up for just a little bit it's going to you're going to hear it sizzle here for a little bit. Well, while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get a few more things ready to go in here. And, uh, oh, let's see what we got over here. We got some of that. And we got a couple cans of that. And, oh, I'm going to need a couple cans of these. And that may be just about everything I need. I got a can of black beans, a can of kidney beans, a can of stewed tomatoes, another can of kidney beans, another can of stewed tomatoes, and I got a quart of, of uh, tomato juice. Well, I love, I love it when it does this. You start to hear this deal. You start to see the steam roll off of there. And I can tell you already, it's going to need more chili powder. Let's go ahead and get that in there. Uh, what do you do with the chili powder? There it is. Here's the chili powder. Okay. We're going to town here now. Okay, let's see if I can find my colander here. I got a colander here someplace. That ain't it. I'll tell you what I may have to do. Oh, I know where my colander is. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. kitchen cabinet down there pouring out so I don't have some of my stuff down there. There's my colander. Uh, I'm not going to swing that around. I'm going to do those. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to the sink. Put it in the sink. And in doing that then I'm going to look at my can over. And I am going to drain my beans. I suppose I should actually stir this in, huh? Yeah, that won't hurt. Just keep my glasses up here. I'm going to take my glasses off for a minute. Ooh, we're going. I like this kind of spatula. It's a lot more easy to control than what a full frying uh, pan is. 